I was talking before the Gremlins got on my phone about, you know, if we don't act now, then um, we're not going to be able to act uh, in, in the very near future. I'm not talking about a decade away here. I'm talking in a very, very short period of time. We have a, uh, I think I heard Rena talking earlier about this Senate committee inquiry to vote in local governments, uh, have it recognised in our constitution. Um, they're doing this basically, I believe, to try and worm their way around a referendum and to get calling for submissions for people to um, express their views. Now, I know how these select committees work and um, you read about a quarter of the submissions that are given to you and you rely on a research officer to compile the rest for you in a summary. Now, I've asked people to just write in a very short one-page letter saying that they reject this proposal as a citizen of this country and a citizen of the Commonwealth of Australia and that it's been rejected in two previous referendums and those referendums stand until we have another one. And if we don't do this, if they don't get letters like that on mass and they don't they don't see that the Australian public is awake to this. What will happen after local government is recognised in the constitution, they will then begin to dissemble the state parliaments. And we will have a situation in Australia where we will have local government that has got all of this money um, and support to roll out Agenda 21 at lightning pace. And we will have a federal government only that is beholden to the UN. So we will be in real trouble. And if people in Australia are listening to this, and I'm sure they are, you need to get pen to paper and you need to find the address of this select committee that you send it into. I would suggest just the um, Senate inquiry into local government and send it off as quickly as you can and make sure you put your name and your address on that letter. And I've started my letter with my will be done and that it is the will of the people that local government is not uh, recognised in, in our constitution. Um, just whatever your heart feels you need to write, keep it short, keep it sharp, keep it shining, but write it. Because if this goes through, uh, we are in big, big trouble. What's the address there, um, Anne, please? Did you give an address for them to write to? I just, I just send the care of Parliament House, uh, Canberra. Um, the Senate committees always have a, um, uh, a secretary to collect mail that arrives for those select committees. So just head it up to the chair of the Senate Select Committee on Local Government, uh, care of Canberra, Parliament House, Canberra. And uh, we need to do this now. Not next week, not next month. We need to do it now. Okay, and, and, and for say, say for listeners who don't know anything about Agenda 21, sounds like a catchy little mm. alphabet, alphabet idea invented by the Club of Rome. <laughs> that's yeah. would suggest, that, that would suggest that it's um, a Roman idea and not an Australian idea. So can you talk about that? <laughs> can you talk about that a bit? Sure. Sure. Well... You know, Agenda 21 um, came from the Earth Summit uh, in Rio in 1992. And it came from a, um, uh, a, a crisis think tank known as the Club of Rome. And they, they thought all of this up uh, in 1968. And I'm just trying to find the speech that I made to get my quotes right because what they said was they needed um, a crisis that would unite the world big enough to unite the world, but would also get people used to the idea of um, global solutions to local problems. And what they came up with was um, climate change, famine, water shortage and the like, uh, that that would fit the bill to bring people together and they would sell it under the, um, the one world religion of environmentalism. And we're seeing that rolled out as we speak. And from that Rio summit came... Agenda 21. Now, I got a list sent to me uh, about four days ago of the members of Parliament who are at the Rio 20 um, uh, summit, which is not that long ago. And we have um, many of our federal politicians from Labor and from Liberal 
party that are endorsing um, Agenda 21. One of them, as a matter of fact, um, came to Adelaide and went on uh, a tour with one of our farmers uh, to hear their stories of how they're being driven off the land. And this particular uh, federal member, to the face of these people, said, this is madness. This environmentalism has got to stop. Yet, yeah, he signed off on Agenda 21. So that tells me um, that they will tell you whatever you want to hear to their face, to your face, uh, anything it takes to get elected. And then behind closed doors, as always happens, deals will be done. And these deals have been done. And I wouldn't believe a word that any of them say. To tell you the truth, I'm, I've been in there for six... I've been in state parliament now for six and a half years. And I've had um, commitments given to me over pieces of legislation, amendments, whatever, where our opposition has gone out publicly and defended the amendments that I've put up, um, have spoken up about, you know, the benefits of it and that it all makes sense. And then just as we come to a vote, um, they join up with the Labor Party, the government, and they switch. They change their mind. And we're left with bad bills, bad legislation that literally turns crim people, no normal people, average people, into criminals overnight. And it's dragnet legislation, I call it. And... Um, <sighs> You know, apart from this OPPT and people getting behind that and um, supporting that initiative and taking the action steps, I see no way out of this, to tell you the truth. Um, we have, on both sides of government, agreeing that they have a right to rule and that they know best for the people of this, this state and this country and they're making decisions on our behalf without informing us what they're doing. They're bypassing our constitution, and Agenda 21 is exactly that. It's about changing how we move around, restricting how we move around our property rights, uh, what we eat, where we get our food from, whether or not we can grow our own food, um, the sort of appliances that we can have in our homes, whether our homes are environmentally um, uh, safe and sound or not, we will have, in a very short period of time, natural resource management officers that will be going into your home to do a home audit. Um, and if you refuse, you're, you're non-compliant. And that can carry a huge fine. Plus, they can then instruct you to make various adjustments to your home that could cost, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And if you can't comply with that, then you can't live in your home. We had a case uh, that was sent to me two weeks ago of an old couple uh, living on a, a, a small property. They're both disabled. And uh, these green Nazis came onto their land. They declared all of their personal belongings to be illegal waste. They hired a dumpster. They loaded all of their stuff into the dumpster, furniture, everything, pot plants, um, and locked these, this disabled couple out of their home and off their land. This is what we would used to think would be illegal seizure of property. But under these environmental laws, they have more authority than our police department has. They can come onto your property without a warrant, uh, reasonable suspicion that you're an environmental vandal, prove that you are, and take what you've got. 